Chameleon is a small game I developed a few years ago that demonstrates a few examples of adaptive music. I programmed the music in action script so I could make it work in the game which was developed in Flash. I was curious if I could recreate my own implementation in Wise. In this video we look at two levels, each demonstrating a different approach to adaptive music, the so-called vertical and horizontal approaches. The goal in this level is to reach the exit at the top without triggering the alarm. Because if you do, the exit will be blocked by a laser door, like you can see here. If you triggered the alarm, you'll have to go back to the beginning of this level to reset it. If you stand still in front of these walls, you become invisible and that's how you can avoid the cameras. For the music, I'm using a vertical approach where I'm crossfading between different tracks. So when the alarm is triggered, I quickly crossfade the currently playing track with the alarm track. These tracks are essentially the same piece of music, but with a different instrumentation, so they can be easily crossfaded with each other. So if you notice, while you're invisible, the music is doing this kind of synth thingy. This is basically the same technique as with the alarm of crossfading two different tracks. Dum, 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 dum. And the last one. In the second level you have exactly 1 minute 11 seconds before the gate or door at the top of this level is closed. So you see those two doors up there in the middle? They'll start closing as soon as you walk through the red camera. Here. Every time you hit one of those lasers you instantly lose 10 seconds of the clock. The music here is underscoring how much time is left, so if we're playing pretty badly, the music will quickly turn more intense. Until the timer runs out completely. If we now have a quick look up there, we see that the doors have been closed and we have to go back to the beginning of the level to reset the timer. This time, we'll use the walls again to become invisible, see if we can reach the top before the timer runs out. Last time when we got this far, the music was already pretty intense. This time, not so much, because we still got plenty of seconds left on the timer. And that's how you complete this level. Unauthorized theft detected. Commencing obligatory slightly pointless self-destruct sequence in 3, 2, 1. And that leads us to the next level, but that's for another time. So let's see how we could implement this in WISE. For your information, this is the version I'm using. Quick words first about vertical and horizontal approach. Usually vertical approach is when you're either fading in and out stems or instruments, or cross-fading different tracks that are playing and looping simultaneously. A horizontal approach is when you shuffle between different segments of the music, often by using transition segments between them. 
Now, it's important to note that in WISE, in their documentation, they have reversed that terminology. So when I say horizontal, in WISE they call it vertical and vice versa. I have a theory why they do it that way, but I'm not going to get into that right now. The first level with the alarms and becoming invisible uses the vertical approach. There are several ways to do a vertical approach. One way is to use stems. Track A, for example, would be percussion. Track B would be the synth pattern and C would be all the rest. Track C would always be playing and if you'd stand in front of a wall, the synth would be faded in. You move away from the wall and the synth stem would be faded out. Meanwhile, track C would just keep playing. Likewise, track A would be faded in and out according to the alarm state. Another way is where for each game state you have created a submix. So track C would be the same as before, but track B would contain both the synth and everything that's in track C. Now, when you're standing in front of a wall, track C is faded out completely, while track B is faded in. The tracks are being crossfaded. The advantage of this approach is that you have total control over the final mix of the music. If you work with stems, you're delegating some of the mixing responsibilities to the middleware, in this case WISE, and that can be tricky. If you're not careful, mixing multiple stems this way can easily cause clipping. So in that case, you probably want to use a limiter in WISE to prevent that. The advantage, however, of using stems is flexibility. You're not locked to a predetermined set of submixes. You can potentially create more submixes on the fly while using less sound files than you might need otherwise. And you can set different volume levels for certain stems to make the music less or more intense. The first thing I did for this level was creating a state group with three states, ambient, hidden, and alarm. Then I created a music segment that contains three music tracks for alarm, for hidden, and for ambient, which I called stealth. This segment is then put in a playlist so I can have it loop infinitely. So at this moment you're only hearing the ambient track playing, but I put three tracks in the segment, so why aren't the other ones playing? Well, the answer is they are, but they're being muted. If you select a track and look at the properties, go to the States tab and you can see I've added the state group. Now for each state in this group, I have set at which volume this track, the ambient track, should be playing. If the game state is alarm, this track will play at minus 96 decibels, which in wise is the minimum and it's the same as minus infinity, or muted. If the game state is ambient, as it is right now, the track will play at 0 decibels or regular volume. If the game state is hidden, the track will be muted. Now if we look at the hidden track, the game state right now is ambient, that's why the word ambient is shown in bold. So the hidden track is currently muted. Same thing for the alarm track, during the ambient game state, the alarm track is muted. Now let's say the player is standing still in front of a wall and is becoming invisible. You can see that now the hidden state is marked in bold and the hidden track is faded into play at zero decibels. Now the alarm track is still muted, so let's switch to the alarm state. So if we switch back to the ambient state, the alarm track is faded out to minus 96 decibels again while the ambient track is faded in. Okay, so now we've set the volumes for each game state, but we still have to determine the time it takes to crossfade between each game state. We do this in the settings of the state group. Here you can set the default transition time, which is currently set to 1 second. You could also set individual transition times between each state, but in this case working with one default transition time is sufficient. Now I'm setting this to 10 seconds, so you can clearly hear how this has an influence on the transition.
10 seconds is something you probably wouldn't use a lot in practice, but you never know, it could work. In this case, I need fast transitions between states, so one second works fine. For the second level, I'm using a horizontal approach. For each section of the music, I've created a playlist container that contains two second or one second fragments of music. In the last sections of the music, I want to be able to transition very quickly so each sound file is no more than one second. That way, the moment the timer runs out, the music can be stopped within one second. These playlists are put in a switch container. And I've also got a game state group with different states. There's ambient when the timer is off. Then as soon as the timer starts, I have timer 1. As soon as the timer has lost 24 seconds, the game will tell Wise to switch to state timer 2. When the timer has lost 48 seconds, it will switch to timer 3. And finally to timer 4. Once the time has run out, it'll switch back to ambient. Now, I won't be needing any transition segments, except when I'm going from any of the timer states to the ambient state, because that's basically when the music needs to be stopped before playing the ambient track again. As you can see, for timer 1 and 2, I've got one transition track. And for state 3 and 4, I'll use this transition track. Now these tracks last only one second or even half a second. Well, actually they're a little longer, their tail will play out, but after one or half a second, I'll start playing the ambient track. And this is simply an eight second loop. Let's have a quick listen. Ambient state. Let's start the timer. So we've been hit once or twice, we've lost more than 24 seconds and we switch to timer two. Now we are playing very badly, losing a lot of seconds quickly. Timer has almost run out. And we're done. Let's reset the timer, try that again. So. We're now playing a little bit better. Maybe we get hit once. But we reached the top well before the timer has run out. There you go, quick example of vertical and horizontal adaptive music in WISE. Thanks for watching, be sure to check out Chameleon, it's on my website, you can play it for free or watch this other video for a bunch more examples of adaptive music.